Hi everyone, I'm Urban Girl and welcome to my channel. Haven't come far today at all. Decided to come out to lockdown shelter. Um, I would like to go for, you know, a walk in the woods and set up the shelter and everything and have a fire. But, um... It, it doesn't seem justifiable to spend, you know, a, a great amount, a deal of time outdoors. So, this is my other option, my lockdown shelter that I built by my own fair hands. It was a flat pack kit, so, um, it, in that respect, uh, it, you know, it, it wasn't too challenging. But anyway, I digress. So, what I'm going to do today, um, it is going to be a bit of an experiment. What I'm really interested in is um, trying to make another poll for the Hungarian Zelt ban. The poll that it comes with is metal and um, it's quite heavy. Um, and also, it does only come with one pole, so if you want to use the two shelter halves, which you've seen me do in various setups outside um, with a tarp or another poncho, um, you, you need to find sticks, obviously. So, um, it's not a problem to find a stick, but um, get finding a straight stick out there is pretty difficult. Um, so this is just an old uh, wooden mop or broom handle which I recycled from lying in the street basically. <laughs> um, I've measured the Hungarian Zelt band pole. I've got the pole with me anyway just to make comparisons. Um, and I've brought the drill out with me uh, to try and uh, I think my, what my idea is I'm going to cut it into three pieces so that it you know will fit in the kind of zelt band pole type bag um, and then I'm going to maybe put some wooden dowels in, in the pieces so that when I then go back out um, I can you know join them together to make a standing pole. Um, I'm thinking I'll either put a dowel or a screw in the top, uh, just, to, just to be the weak point. I'd prefer a dowel actually, um, just to be the point that, that goes into the top of the lavu. I'm not sure if it will work because um, I'm fairly confident that the drill will be able to drill through the wood okay, but I don't really have any sort of bench or clamp to clamp the wood in to actually drill a hole in it to get the dowel in it so that's the kind of main challenge is you know trying to keep the wood in the, the right position to to drill a hole in it for the dowels so uh, we'll see how we'll see how that goes um one of the other projects that i can work on uh, out here is the kuksa the kuksa is not finished yet um, I've been making a lot of really good progress with it though and um, over the Christmas um, and New Year holidays I ended up investing in a Beavercraft uh, spoon carving set so it comes with a, a kind of hook knife for a spoon um, it also comes with a, a really good gouge and um, it also comes with a really sharp knife and and so far I've been using the gouge and the hook carver to, to continue to try and make progress on the inside of the, the kooksa. Um and I also want to drill a hole in that uh, in the handle so that I can put my lanyard on it. So yeah, a couple of wee projects basically that I can work on here. Um get you out of the house and uh, you know, keep you going. So anyway, let's get started on this elk band pole, guys. 
So here's the um, original Zelt band pole. As I said, it's just a kind of stainless steel pole that snaps together. And uh, on the top of it, um, and on the bottom, that's what it has. It just has these plastic spikes, um, and they go in the top of the the. So one goes in the top of the Zelt band, and the other one um, goes in the ground. The thing I don't like about having the spike on the bottom is um, it means you always have to find the ground sheet, um, you know, wrapping around it in some way. Um, and as you know, I did make a kind of wee custom ground sheet with a split in the middle for that reason. But it is quite annoying, so I, I would prefer that I had a flat end on the bottom that I could, um, you know, use inside the Zelt band and also just you know, sit on top of the ground sheet. Um, I do think it would be stable enough. I mean, you can always use a guy line um, in any case. So the thing about this pole is, uh, this piece of wood, um, it is actually a bit short. Uh, it's a, probably about 10, 12 centimetres too short um, to fit. The, the same height as the Zelt band pole. I'm going to get round that as by, as I say, I'm going to have a flat base and what I'm going to do is get a, another wee piece of flat wood that the pole can sit in um, and that'll give it a wee bit of extra height. Um, so I'm hoping that, um, you know, that that works, just giving it a wee bit of extra height that way, but we'll see. I don't even know if I'll be able to drill into this bit of wood. I mean, it might actually, um, it might actually just crack open. But we'll try it anyway. So I'm going to measure. I've got my wee radio in the background there to keep me company. Yeah, I just wanted to point out one of the things about the Polish bread bag. Um, I, I've seen so many different people uh, carry these uh, um, and fasten them and, and it does seem to be a bit of a mystery as to how you actually fasten this to keep it closed because uh, it does have, have quite a strange buckle system at the front. Um, but I'll show you, as you can see, I've got mine here closed and as you can see, it is staying closed, it's not slipping back the way. Um, so, if you like, I, I'm just going to show you how, how I actually do that. So, here is the bag itself, so I'll just undo this buckle and then I'll show you how I do it up. It's actually really, really easy once you know how. So that's the main body of the bag there. I've got my carving kit and gloves and stuff in here and my saw. Um, that's a strap which just helps keep the inside shut, uh, pulled together. So this is the way I do it. I mean, I don't know, guys. You tell me if you do it another way that you think is more secure, but this is the way I do it. So your buckle, your spare buckle goes through this one here. And then there's one or two buckles here. Um, I've never really been able to get it down to the bottom buckle um, usually just because when you've got any amount of stuff in here it doesn't really seem to want to go down to that bottom buckle um, and I actually think that bottom buckle might be for the straps um, in the underside um, to, to fasten on something on the underneath but again the way they come from the back of the bag there's not really enough fabric to to attach like you know um a poncho or anything so yeah but i mean they are there for that purpose but for some reason they're not really that long so if anybody knows a lot more about the bottom straps the ones that are on the back and how you can use them to any great effect i mean you could get something in there but as you can see it's not much so back to this front bit so what I do is I go down through that first buckle. So down through that first buckle there, as you can see, 
and that's through the buckle that's on the, the, the lid of the bag. You then come back up, so pull, this, pull it back up, go underneath that buckle again there, and then pull it tight. And once you pull it tight, what that does is it snaps that wee buckle through there, which is great. So yeah, there we go. That's that, guys. That's how I fasten my Polish bread bag to stop it slipping open. If you think there is a better way, then absolutely let me know, but it seems to work for me. Okay. Yeah, I got my bag so that I can get my... my tape measure. Right, that's how much I've managed to carve out of the kooksa so far. So if you look back at my other video, you'll see what I did there. Pretty good, pretty impressed. The gouge has been absolutely brilliant, but I'll show you that later. I'm going to do this poll first. The neighbour's dog's out for his dog training, so you might hear him jumping up at the door now and again. He's only a pup, well, he's not even a year old, I don't think. <laughs> so he's jumping up at the window to see me. <laughs> Hello, Baxi. <laughs> so I think this pole I'm just going to measure it but I think it's about 120 yeah it's a wee bit short of 120 because it's a bit broken But if I split that into three pieces, then I probably want each piece just to be about 40 centimetres. I mean, they don't need to be exact anyway, so I'm just roughly going to uh, mark that on them where I'm going to saw it. I've just realised it's actually not the dog trainer. I think it's one of my neighbours' uh, family, um, which probably means that they were wanting to use the summer house, um, which is a shame because I'm out here, but it is mine. But you know, we don't mind other people using it. So I'll just make a wee rough mark with a saw where Forte is. Doesn't need to be exact, as I say, it's just roughly. roughly at as I say it's not quite 120 because the top's broken so it's actually even shorter than 120 they normally do measure 120 but this one's a bit short because it's broken uh, I'm gonna have to 
I'm going to saw this outside. So yeah, tiny saw, tiny saw on my finger, which reminds me that I really should wear gloves when I'm working with wood. I'm just gradually building up the hole for the small dowels. So that's the size of the dowel that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to go in here. So yeah, I've still got a fair bit to go. Obviously don't want it too loose, but I still need to be able to get it in there. So I'm just gradually working up the diameter. broke my nail now, pulling these out, yeah, I'm going to try this one, Now I think that would probably just about do it. If I go any wider, there's a chance that it will be too loose. And this feels like it will just about go in there if I hammer it in a bit. So I, I need my wee multi-tool hammer for that, um, which I didn't bring out with me. I'm gonna have to go and get it. Yeah, but I, I, I do think that is definitely, definitely enough. Hammer it in. Well, I don't know if this will work, but I mean, it's not straight because they're not they're not a uh, dead center. So this one 
this one would be for the top to go through the lava. Um, and this one's for the bottom. I've just left the rounded end of the, the mop there. Yeah, that's bet. I've actually definitely drilled a bit deeper into that one. Um, and that's actually sitting in nicely, that one. Can just round that one. So it's not straight, it's wonky. The pole's wonky. <laughs> I've got a wonky pole, but never mind. I think it might work. Who knows? We'll need to see. Ah, yeah, that's good. I can I can actually twist them in a bit. So the question is, what height is it in comparison? It's probably still really short. Yeah, so I'm still missing about that 10 centimetres, so I definitely need a bit of wood for it to sit on, I think. So, but anyway, I'm actually, although it's a bit wonky, in principle, I'm quite pleased with... Um, you know how it worked out in the end and um, because in principle it looks uh, apart from the fact that it's wonky it looks like what i wanted it to be which was three pieces of wood that i could just easily slot together and weight wise this uh, is nothing in comparison to this <coughs> so we'll wait and see need to test it in the field see if it works right on to the cook, sir. I've just come back in now as you can, I don't know if you can see or hear but anyway that's the rain on um so I'm in the I'm in the summer house listening to the rain um yeah these uh I'll show you the beaver craft stuff this is the set that I got um it's it's a basic spoon set it's called so that's the hoot knife the carving knife um, and this is the gouge so as you can I've got small hands because I am small so it is really really a, a big it's a really really big gouge curved gouge um, absolutely brilliant for the cooksa and super 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 sharp out the box um, yeah and I also bought the Beavercraft uh, stropping leather for it with the stropping, you know, with the stropping compound um, so that I can, you know, keep them really, really sharp. Yeah, I bought these cheap sets before off Amazon and they're a complete waste of money um, because they're rubbish. They're okay for probably green wood or, you know, like balsa wood that, that um, is not tough at all. But for seasoned hardwood, they're absolutely hopeless. Um, as as I said before, I, I do believe that this is probably 
a piece of pine um, because it's got a really, really red resin in it. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't particularly smell of anything. So, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, the resin's, the resin's very, very waxy feeling. So, we're definitely getting there. I mean, I'm making a lot of progress on the shape. Um, I'm going to use the gouge now because I can do that in here because the stuff that I'm gouging out is in the inside so it doesn't go everywhere. That's me. I'm just going to sit here and uh, carve out a wee bit more of the kooksa. Sorry it wasn't my usual adventure out to the woods. But anyway, if you have tuned in, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all your comments, all your views. I'm just an urban girl out having a bit of fun. See?